Welcome back to the confirmation videos as we continue our talk on the Lord's Prayer today. We're looking at the seventh petition, but deliver us from evil. I'm Pastor Matt. So deliver us from evil. Seems like something that we need, right? But see, to say deliver us from evil means that there's actually something evil out there. So what is this evil thing? Is it just the general evil and badness that we see all around in the world? And I bet if you ask your friends what the sources of evil are, you might get a bunch of different answers. But as we pray in this petition, as Jesus leads us through this whole prayer, by the end of it, he says, deliver us from the evil one. Oh, now that sounded a little different. Deliver us from the evil one, Satan himself, the one who rebelled against God and tried to claim all of God's creation for himself, to corrupt it and pull it away from God. We pray, Lord, deliver us from the evil one. Take us away from him and bring us unto yourself, God. So open up your catechisms to the seventh petition and let's look at what it says in there and what does this mean. We pray in this petition, in summary, that our Father in heaven would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, possessions and reputation, and finally, when our last hour comes, give us a blessed end and graciously take us from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven heaven. So how does the seventh petition relate to the previous petitions? Well, it's a, it's a summary. It's a summary of all the other things. Remember, right before this one, we said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us now from the evil one. Keep us safe, Lord, in body and soul and bring us to you. Keep us safe from everything harmful. Now, we certainly walk through times where things are hard, where there is suffering, where we still feel the effects of Satan's corruption upon creation, yet we rest secure in God's promise in Jesus. That promise that was poured over you in baptism, that promise to hold on to you in his grace and mercy so that no matter what sufferings come in this present time, we know that in eternity we rest in the assurance of the forgiveness of our sins and eternal life given to us in Jesus alone. See, you are not strong enough to conquer Satan. It's not going to happen. He's stronger than you are. He's craftier than you are. He's slyer than you are. But he has been defeated in Jesus and you are in Jesus. Now, so Satan has no eternal power over you at all because you are wrapped up in Christ's righteousness in your baptism. That is a sure and certain promise given by God that you can be confident in. And so Satan can't just come up and sneak up on you and take you. That's not how it works. You are God's child made so in the waters of your baptism, strengthened in the body and blood of Christ in communion, forgiven through his doing, through his action. And you hear that promise and you hear that forgiveness all the time. So, there will be times where you doubt, there will be times where you question, and those are okay. Those questions, seeking truth. But see, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And you are in him. So you are in the truth. And being in that truth, God delivers you from the evil one. And then we wrap up the whole prayer, right? Looking upon who our God is. And why do we pray all these things? We pray them because God is the one that is over his kingdom because God is the one that has the power and God is the one that deserves the glory. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. And you are held on to by God forever and ever in Jesus as he delivers you from the evil one. All right, 
Come to class, have some questions, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for delivering us from the evil one. In Jesus, Satan is defeated, and we can live in confidence knowing that you hold on to us securely, that we do not need to doubt your powerful hand in our lives, but know and rest in the fact that we are yours. And you send us out to tell other people about it. So thank you for the forgiveness of sins, which you have made not just possible, but sure and certain in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. All right. Live confidently knowing that you are Christ's child.